let's have a look how bad this chain is. Some parts are broken and chewed up. You can see there it's been squashed down pretty hard. And there, so this piece here I can probably only use from there to there, so that much. And this piece, it's had a pretty rough time as well. You can see when you look along it, um, there's a bit of a twist in it. So if I were to put that back on, it would try and ride off straight away, I think. So I can't really use that bit. This end isn't much better. It's been squashed and the whole thing's been stretched and spread out. Can't really use this piece, so there's not much usable chain in there really, when you look at it. I would be better off leaving it a three-wheel drive than, than putting this chain back in. It's in such a bad state, so... I think what I'll do is uh, make some inquiries and see if I can find some some new or second-hand chain. I think I'd be asking for trouble putting this back in. The fellow I bought the grader off had a length of chain lying around, so he's given it to me. I'm going to try and clean it up and get some of that rust off. Uh, I'll give it a water blast first, just to see what it looks like. It's got a, it's a wee bit worn, but um, I think it'll be better than having to buy a new chain, which is around $500. So I'm going to see what this comes up like, and um, if it's too far gone, I'll just have to buy some. Interesting uh, pin there. I think the main thing will be how how much wear there is on the uh, on the pins. That one there is quite bad, and whether I can get these rollers turning again. All right, so I'm going to try some electrolysis to see if I can um, coax the rust off this. Just a piece of mild steel here. Fill it with water and um, put some salt in it to create some conductivity and then just pass the current through it and, and see what happens. I've just got a car battery charger here um, with a couple of amps running through it. So the positive is on the sacrificial bar and the negative lead is on the chain. I'll just leave that there overnight and see what it does. You can see it's bubbling away. So. Hopefully that does the job. Don't drink that, buddy. Don't drink that. Look at the state of that. Jesus. Oh, well, it's doing something. Actually, they feel a wee bit freer. That's amazing. These are actually freeing up quite nicely, these rolls. Most of them weren't turning at all before, so that's a good sign. There's still a few of them are stuck, but um, we'll just keep it going all day and see what happens. Alright, I've got it in this bucket now, which I think is a bit better because it's deeper and more of the sacrificial bar is underwater. I think it'll do a quicker job. Put some more salt in there. So you just put as much salt in as you want to get the the right amperage on your battery charger. You can see it's sparking there, so uh, that means it's there's some some conductivity going through it. So I want it to come up to about two amps. problem with it being chain links, I don't know how much conductivity we're getting through every link, so um, there might be links where there's no connection. So just so you can see that rising and lowering. 
as I move it. That means there's not a great connection between those links. Just have to get it, move it to where it is conducting, which looks pretty good there, I think. Actually, it goes better there, doesn't it? It's going way up now. That's about in the middle. That's probably better there. Don't want to overload the charger though, so I could always put it on 12 volts if it gets too high. And that's uh, that halves the amps. But I'll leave it on 24 for a while and see how it looks. Alright, while that chain is stewing, I'll try and jack the rear end up and take the wheel and hub off the, the front of that tandem case so I can have a good look at the sprocket and um, and make sure all the wheels and everything turn freely nothing's binding up Look at that, it's so heavy it just pushed that base block down into the ground a couple of inches. There's a bit of weight in there, alright. Those bearings sound okay. No play in there at all. That's all the drive wheels jacked up off the ground. All the bearings seem good, there's no sideways movement and uh, they all spin freely. So that's a relief, there's no major issues going on there. Brakes both work evenly. Excellent brakes actually, which is uh, quite a big thing around here. We do live on a bit of a hill so it needs to be able to stop in a hurry, which it does. This, this step here has been bent at some stage probably by the blade. It's quite annoying to get up there, so um, while I've got the jack here, I'll try and push that up into place. Alright, that's a lot better. The step is nearly horizontal now. I didn't want to push it any further because I think it would have just broken off. Also, it was um, very slippery before with just the bare steel, so I've welded some grip on there because uh, I nearly slipped off it a couple of times, so uh, that should be a lot better. Alright, let's see if we can get that wheel off there.
Right, I'll dump that oil out of there before I go any further, otherwise we'll end up with a big mess. Let's have a look at the sprocket. All the teeth are still there and they're not bent. The sprocket doesn't look twisted or anything. So what I'll do is just um, I'll cover this bearing up because that's an open bearing in there and um, just file all these rough edges off and these burrs so the chain can sit down in there properly. I'm wondering if the problem might have been caused by these different size tyres. You can see this this tie here has got quite a bit of tread on it, whereas that one, that's worn down. So the, the circumference of those two tyres is different. They'd be constantly fighting each other, which would be putting a lot more stress on the chains because this, this tyre is trying to force the smaller one to go around faster than it should be. So that's putting constant pressure on the chain and maybe that made it jump off or something, I don't know. So I'll put the spear back on it, which is pretty much the same depth thread as that one. So uh, they'll be a lot closer. And I'll just keep this one as the spear. That's about all I can do. I'm not going to be buying new tyres for it, because uh, my budget doesn't extend to that. So I'll just put that one back on it. And uh, hope for the best. Because I've got it jacked up off the ground, I can turn those wheels quite easily just by um, turning the drive shaft. That drive sprocket seems pretty good actually. It means I don't have to take this whole tandem case off, which would be a bugger of a job. There's quite a bit of metal, metal flakes in that from the chain and the sprockets. Who knows how long since that's been cleaned. Lovely. You wouldn't want that stuff getting in your bearings. There's quite a bit of water in there actually, so... We'll have to go around and um, replace all the seals. There's no way I'm going to reach right down the end there. It's about one and a half meters long. So I've made this little tool so I can reach in there and scrape it out. It's easier. Give me a fright, buddy. That's Rambro's son, Thunder, turned into a big boy. And he's quite capable of breaking bones, so I've got to watch him. They're pretty unpredictable, the old Rams. One minute they're your mate, the next minute they want to kill you. 
case you guys don't know, I've got another channel called Angry Ram, so I'll leave a link in the bottom in the description, you can check it out if you want. This is Rambo's last son before he died. He's just like his old man, except he doesn't have the horns, which is uh, good for me. Anyway, back to business. Feel a, feel a bit of rubbish in there, look at that. There's a few bits of metal floating around the bottom. It's the old chewed up bits of chain, no doubt. So, you can see there's a big gouge in the side there. So, I guess it's probably when it rode off the edge and it was still going around. I don't know. So, it'll take a bit of stopping, alright. There's a very fine sort of plasticky gasket there. It's quite thin. I have a feeling that is to make the hub move around because the tension the chain on this, the, the whole hub moves, it's um, slightly off center so you turn it round to the next bolt to tighten it up and I think this gasket here is just to make it slide easier. I don't like my chances of finding another one of those so I think I'll clean it all up give it a good wire brush, um, clean all these threads out and then um, I'll just grease it that should seal it up pretty well On the previous video, someone noticed there was a loose bolt on the drive shaft, so I'll get that tightened up and um, check all the other ones as well while I'm at it. See there's a bolt, a nut missing there as well. Better try and find one of those. Been through my nut selection and had a wee look. What are the chances that one of these will fit? Too big. Close, but not quite. Bingo, that's the one. Check these other ones. Oh, that one's loose too. It's not good. That one's loose as well. Mm. That's loose as well, that one. So all these nuts around the back end of the diff are, were loose. That might be why it's weeping so much oil out of there. Another job I've got to do is to fix this valve. It's for the uh, locking mechanism on the turntable. So when the engine's running it just it stays up and um, I've got to, got to figure out how to make it release the air so it comes back down into lock position. Uh, I think it's blocked up or something, so I'll have a look at that. That air valve was working again, I just cleaned out that little outlet and um, I think it had a mason bee or something in it. So that's good that I didn't have to pull that apart. I 
another little job fixed we're getting there slowly I've got to take this off to get to the hydraulic filter so I don't actually have a tool that would fit that it's been it's been quite rounded off so I think I'm gonna to have to make a tool of some sort to get in there because a spanner would just slip on that so I've got this bit of pipe I might try and make something to go over that and then um, weld a bar on it so I can turn it Let's see if that does the job. Oh boy, that really doesn't want to come off. Ah, gotcha. All right, better get a bucket ready, I suppose. It's going to be a bit of fluid in there. Doesn't actually look too bad, surprisingly. That's good to see. No big chunks in there, which is good. Just very fine, sort of metallic paste. Right, this is what it is. Always a good idea to hide the key or disconnect the batteries when you're doing something like this just so no one comes along and starts it because the hydraulic pumps don't like being run dry all right let's have a go at getting that transmission filter off see it's quite rusty up in there Hopefully it'll come out all right so i'll drain it out of there and then undo this bolt it's um an automatic three-speed transmission power shift that oil looks nice and clean it's a good sign That's the filter for the gearbox. I'll order one of those as well. Not many numbers on it. Just seems to be that number there. Looks nice and clean, that's good. Look at that disgusting green and brown slime on there. I wonder what that is. I guess it's like iron oxide and all sorts of goodies. Ah, that's like new almost. Look at that. Oh man, that's heavy. It's taken most of the rust off. You can see this this piece here, which was sticking out of the um, solution. That's still pretty much seized up. The rest of it looks pretty good. And um, 
all the rollers, most of the rollers have uh, loosened up except the ones that were out of the solution I'll, I'll dry it out overnight and then um, I'll soak it in diesel for a few days and uh, I think it'll be good to go Let's have a close look at this old chain there are some pretty rough parts on it, so I'll have to break it up into a few sections, I think, and try and make one good chain out of the two. I just got to make sure that none of the the roller um, bearings are broken. I think I did see one that was broken. It might be that one actually. Yeah, you can see if you look down there, the roller bearing is is broken, shattered. So I'm gonna have to get rid of that link. Alright, the more I look at this chain, the more problems I'm finding with it. There's another cracked bushing in that link, right at the edge. And I think there's another one there, so this old chain's obviously been under quite a bit of stress at some stage, and uh, it's done a fair bit of damage. There's another cracked one there, so I'm going to have to take that one out. Some sections seem alright, but... Then there's a, like a broken bushing in the middle of a good section, so I'd need a lot of joining links to make it work. I probably could patch it together and make a usable chain, but I think it's just so worn out. There's probably broken bushings I can't see, so I'd always be worried about uh, flying apart and doing more damage. So I'll just order a new chain and um, be done with it. $500 or something, so small investment for that peace of mind. Seems a bit of a shame to waste this chain after all the, the work I put into it. I've got a friend that makes sculptures and art out of old bits of uh, chain and engine parts, so I'll take it up to him and see what he can do with it. God, it's loud, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, if we can join that one up to that. So that'll be the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Custom made hood ornament. I love it. I think I'll call them the Lazy Barford. I've got that chain ordered. It's probably going to take a week or so to get here because we're still in lockdown here. The parts are taking a wee while to arrive. So when that arrives I'll put it back together and hopefully we'll be able to uh, get it up and running again in the next part. So we'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.